Well, good afternoon and welcome in. It's a National League Championship action from Keith Hay Park. Round seven, and it is a crucial one between Auckland United and Kashmir Technical. Two teams who are in must-win territory in this uh, one-round regular season before the top two teams qualify to play in the grand final. Good afternoon, Andrew Dewhurst with you, alongside uh, former All-White uh, Hedamayanata and uh, Harry, this is cup final stuff, isn't it? Both these teams really have to win if they want to keep pace with Olympic and Auckland City. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Wellington Olympic are you know, having a, a great time at the top of the table at the moment, scoring a lot of goals. But we saw Auckland United overcome Crosstown Rivals a couple of weeks ago, Auckland City 3-2, what was a really exciting game as well. Uh, Kashmir Tech 4-2 last week against Napier City Rovers, getting their, uh, their season back on track after a 5-3 loss to Birkenhead the week before. And I think you, you throw that all in the mix, and I think Kashmir Tech can't afford to lose today just to stay in touch with um, you know the top two. As you said, Andrew, those top two qualified for the final in, in three or four weeks' time. Well, there's been a, a, a lot of action around uh, the country football-wise over the last couple of weeks and uh, already we're underway today. Auckland City 3-1 over Christchurch United. We're told Christchurch missed a penalty in that game, uh, which may have taken it to 2-2 uh, at the time. Auckland play Kashmir, Miramar, Melville. And uh, then we have uh, further info for you with the table that's why it is must win for united and Kashmir. olympic on 15 if auckland city do confirm that results and go to 16 points uh, it's a big jump if united or Kashmir lose ground on them today so they really do have to win remember including today's match just three games left in the regular season Let's have a look at the lineups uh, for this afternoon. Kashmir Technical make a couple of changes uh, out of the side. Go Stora and Tung. So uh, an opportunity for Chester Gaskin and Sam Richards coming into the lineup. Kian Donkers, the New Zealand under 20 rep up front. Uh, he gets goals for them, but so too Garvin Goglin, who has seven on the season so far. So uh, Garvin uh, Coughlin is the golden boot leader at the moment with those seven goals so uh, those two players in an attack sense are crucial are they though a little bit light in the middle of the park generally against some of the uh, the better sides well look, i think that yeah quite possibly uh, so we've got alex ballard and, and sam lapsley sort of holding the the, the the middle of the park for uh for Kashmir Tech this afternoon. Very strong at the back with Tom Schwartz, obviously. And uh, for Auckland United, no changes from the team that uh, played last week. So no changes for uh, Jose Figuera. So he has a consistent lineup. Uh, Michael Den Heyer is the anchor in that midfield up front. Uh, they haven't got anyone that's dominating goal scoring wise. In fact, of the 11 that are on the park and the subs, no one has more than one goal. So they do spread the load around a little bit in that sense. Ross Haviland uh, will uh, anchor the team, the skipper at centre back. So uh, good to have that consistent selection at this stage of the yeah, season. Absolutely. I think we're really impressed with the way, how the way, you know, Auckland United played Auckland City a couple of weeks ago. Ollie Fay, Josh Redfern, um, Nicholas Imbrano scored obviously the first goal for that game. Those players are, are key to getting on top of, uh, of Kashmir Tech this afternoon. Nick Waldron is the referee. And supported by Reza El Rabia and Daniel Neville and Riley Greenbury controls things from the fourth official position. Last time we called a match here at Keith Hay Park, uh, Harry, it was like we'd gone back into the apocalypse of some sort weather-wise. It was shocking and today is stunning and very, very hot and that will be a factor. Yeah, it is a beautiful day here in Auckland. I think we've had a couple of days of torrential, torrential rain, but look, it's a beautiful setting here. Uh, at Keith Hay Park, as you said a couple of weeks ago, it was as the heavens sort of opened up. And you talked about uh, locusts or, or rain or whatever, you know. It was, um, yeah, it was horrendous. But the players, it was, a, it was such an exciting game and a good game of football. Um, and I was impressed the way way Auckland United really started that game against Auckland City, put them under pressure early on, and didn't allow Auckland City to get in the, into any sort of rhythm. So yeah, I'm expecting, you know, uh, Jose Figueroa to, to marshal his team the same way against. Uh, what is, is proven to be a, a very good Kashmir Tech side. So it really is do or die. More so, you would think, for Kashmir Technical, given that points table that we looked at. They're on nine. They've got yeah. three wins, three losses, and, and they do tend to be a little bit uh, uh, one way or the other. 14 goals for 13 against. So they score plenty, but they concede plenty. Auckland United, they've uh, just had the one loss. They've got uh, the three wins, two draws. But uh, they are 
in similar territory to Kashmir, given that Auckland City look like they will pick up the three points over Christchurch United this afternoon. Just about ready to go. And it will be Kashmir Technical to get us underway. Kian Donkers, who uh, enjoyed such a good tournament uh, for the New Zealand under-19s at the Oceania Championships. He's looking to impress uh, Darren Baisley or whoever might be the New Zealand under-20 coach, of course, for that World Cup next year. I don't know they've made that appointment yet. Darren Baisley's contract was up. And, uh, early opportunity for Kashmir down this right wing side cutting into the area and in fact uh, shooting into did that collect the post or was it into the post behind the goal a little bit of a uh, difficult one to pick up Harry but yeah. an impressive start yeah and eager very loose on that left hand side giving Gofflin a just a sniff of a, of a yard to get a shot on goal yeah it did hit the, the stanchion there behind the goal but already good Good signs from Kashmir Tech, and nice to see sort of Tom Schwartz. We talked about you know, how important their, their backline is, and you know, obviously conceded some goals there. But um, I think having him at the back really gives them a good balance. It's similar to Curtis Mogg um, for Auckland United, very much a, a, a left-sided player, um, but well balanced and good distribution, and that's what sort of Kashmir Tech are looking for out of the back. Well, in that so game here a couple of weeks ago where well, Auckland United uh, in essence uh, gave their season something of a, a lifeline with that uh, remarkable 3-2 win over Auckland City in uh, the Auckland Derby as uh, that one swung across uh, looking for a switch of play there it was Andrew Blake just cut out by the fullback though but uh, they then to a certain degree undid that good work against a very good Wellington Olympic team who, frankly, as uh, the referee has to uh, award a little drop ball here because uh, he's got in the way of possession. Uh, Olympic are just looking the, the best of good things ever since that first round loss against uh, Auckland City, and that was controversial. Yeah. They've, they've just gone on a march, haven't They're they? They're looking very good, aren't they? I mean, Kelly and Gould scored two. Um, Jack Henry Sinclair got the other one in that uh, three-run uh, 3-1 win from Olympic uh, against Auckland United last week. But um, yeah, Gianni Bazookas is also, I think he's topped the goal scoring charts uh, so far this season. So yeah, definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of skill, a lot of technique, a lot of firepower going forward to uh, uh, do Olympic. Yeah, Bazookas uh, with uh, five goals. Henry Sinclair also with five. Of course, uh, man involved in this match uh, is currently top of the pops in the golden boot with uh, Garvin Coughlin on seven. Courtesy of uh, a uh, hat trick in the 4 2 win over Napier City Rovers, helping his telly. Here's uh, Kashmir again. I, I, I would expect, given the scenario we've described, that uh, it won't quite be the kitchen sink right from the get go, but you would think both teams have spoken about it this week, Harry, that a draw really is no good to them. So that can open up a, a, a game, can't it? Well, well, I think neither can afford to lose. Actually, Andrew, so I'm, I'm sure you talked to um, Dan Schwartz. I think, you know, a draw still, I mean, given what we've seen at the top of the table, right, in, in one and two there, um, you know, Olympic kind of will be, from the looks of things, with three, as you said, three games to go, look, look likely to, to, to sneak that first spot, maybe the top two. So it's really that, uh, that second spot, and there's probably four teams spread across between, you know, nine and 13 points. We're looking before this game um, today. So... Uh, Kashmir Tech really can't afford to lose. A draw probably keeps keeps their nose in there, um, but definitely a, a loss would be very difficult for them to recover um, with two games to go. Auckland United through Haviland, just uh, patience in their build-up, and then a bit of friendly fire here. Goodness me, Blake's gone down. He was collected by Ridge uh, Mirati. And this uh, looks a bit uncomfortable. Has he copped a... Just a cork? Yeah, Lots I of things, a, a knock on the, the thigh. They just got in each other's way. And uh, just a, a little bit of a, a, a clumsy coming together of the two players, and this doesn't look very good for Blake. And the old uh, Charlie horse, the dead leg, it, it can be difficult to, uh, to shake off. One of those ones, 
Dewey, you know, just run it off, right? It's one of those ones you can just run it off. <laughs> and I'm sure Andrew Blake, I'm sure he has many of those over a number of seasons here in you'd, New Zealand. So you'd rather not get it from your teammate, particularly though. after about what, five or six minutes, really, as well. So Blake will uh, just uh, perhaps uh, be a passenger for a moment or two. One of the biggest challenges with with an injury like that is going to be half time because uh, if you can continue yeah. to run and keep moving, you're okay. Haviland. Mog, the younger of the two centre-backs by nine years, at 21 years of age. Den Heyer, who is the fulcrum, as we mentioned in this midfield, the 26-year-old uh, tall, graceful player and when he dominates a, a, a game from uh, that uh, anchor point, if you like, in midfield to uh, Auckland United, uh, pretty well set up, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Like he's, he's played that number six role extremely well so far this season. Then higher, just screens in front of that, you know, the, the back, or in two, certainly the central two, being in Haviland and uh, in Mog. It's one of those players that, you know, he just goes about his business quite quietly. You know, he, he, he's kind of that, I guess, the, the glue that, that moves between the attack and, and, and midfield, you know, so. There he is uh, winning the first header, but uh, loses out on the second occasion. Hoglund, nice uh, attacking foray here for Kashmir again. They've looked lively in the opening six minutes or so, certainly They've had the uh, the better moments in the attacking third of the two sides. That one is uh, cleared away reasonably comfortably by Marathi, but at the expense of a corner. McLaughlin and uh, Com Lyle Matheson have um, combined well so far this season for the Tech. Isaac given plenty of time to push the reset. Not a nice little step over. McIsaac again. And now uh, Auckland United with a chance on the counter attack. Donkers uh, takes off and now receives the ball. Redfern, it is, I apologise. Redfern, who was uh, a real opportunity there in the penalty area if the first touch was uh, a little tighter. But it's a nice counter attack from Auckland United. Good, strong, aggressive, running out of the middle of the park by Hashe Raniga. Sort of won the ball on the edge of the box and that lovely 20, 30 metre run with the ball and a nice ball out to Redfern. Kashmir got players back quickly though. And uh, from a corner at the other end of the park, we have a corner now for the home side towards the far post and uh, flying in with uh, a strong hitter. Looked like the skipper, but uh, straight into the hands of Danny Knight. In control was uh, Matheson, the South African, who has a couple of goals to his name this season. Matheson, Donkers, and uh, Coglin are the dominant players so far as goals are concerned. 12 between them. The Kashmir technical. Haviland bundled over. Just a little too aggressive was Donkers. And uh, Haviland, I think, just a little too experienced, Harry. Yeah. I think he uh, knew that contact was about to uh, to be made and just collapsed the moment he was hit. And he was hit. Cashmere technical, just, just happy to just sit in and drop off when uh, in these sort of situations when United are, are, are quite happy. Just control the tempo here. I feel they're going to you know, keep, keep themselves organised, just cut out those passing channels, get everyone behind the ball. And then when they do win possession, you see what they before with Sam Richards with that, that more direct ball over the top for Kian Donkers. We saw Goffman on the on the far side, inside the first sort of minute as well, get some space in behind Ranega. 
So I ex expect Tech just to sit in and, and just use a, perhaps a, a, a counter-attacking tactic or more direct approach at times as well. Schwartz, the skipper, of course, uh, the team coached by Dan Schwartz. Given away, though, and a shooting chance, which uh, had Mike interested enough just to make sure that that was uh, going wide of his near post. In truth, I think it was anyway. Yeah, well wide, wasn't it? But you know, I think Danny Knight wasn't going to take any chances. Yeah, Zebrano scored a lovely goal against Oops. Auckland City a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful Just team goal, run. wasn't it? Great cross from the left and a beautiful run and, 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 a, and a nice finish with his head. Near post this time, and again it's a header towards goal. This time Den Higher can't get it uh, on a downward trajectory. And Danny Knight happy to see that one go over the crossbar. Michael Den Higher, who has uh, played his football in the Netherlands, Germany, Japan, and of course here in New Zealand. So certainly a case of have boots, will travel for Michael Den Higher. A touch in the middle of the park there by Zambrano. First time I've seen Kashmir Tech, uh, Harry, this season. I, I, I know you have seen them. They certainly do look as though they're prepared to uh, spend long periods out of possession and then uh, spring players forward when they can. They get a free kick here with the uh, challenge on Matheson. Uh, immediately won back by uh, Oliver Middleton for United. Is that uh, pretty much their modus operandi, do you think, based yeah. on what you've seen? Yeah, that, look, uh, they're content to just get their two lines of uh, defence sorted? Yeah, I think they'll, they'll sit in and stay as organised and as tight as they can. Um, they'll try and restrict those passing channels for United. You know, Den High, as we see, you know, loves to play these sorts of balls into space behind or inside the wide defenders. Blake with the room in the penalty area. And Kashmir struggling to clear this away. Richards eventually is helped by the referee. So, just looking there, I'm not sure what it was Nick Waldron saw, but no complaints from Auckland United. So perhaps a, a little bit of a, a shirt grab was picked up by the referee, but to Kashmir were looking a little shaky. Then higher can turn and pick his spot, and, and that usually spells danger. Middleton. Fay. Very good uh, feat to uh, Ollie Fay. Edge of the area chance for uh, Auckland United. Not able to keep the shot down was Zambrano, but the last uh, couple of minutes have almost proven productive for the home team. Yeah, it's been a bit sloppy playing out from the back. Kashmir Tech, the surrendering position too easy in the last couple of minutes. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Oli Faye, what a, you know, a very tidy player, skillful player, good technique, scored a nice goal against Auckland City a couple of weeks ago as well. Yeah, he is uh, one of a number of players who have just the one goal to their name. Ironically, the only player that, that has more than one is not in the squad, so I haven't heard of uh, what it is that's keeping Kamata out of the team, but he has a couple, but Faye has one, Redfern has one, Zambrano has one, Regent Mirati has one, so they've not been prolific, have they, in, in scoring goals. Richards, who one of uh, two changes to this Kashmir side. Uh, Stora and Tung out of the team, so both changes at the back as Blake looks to have recovered from the uh, dead leg issue that he picked up earlier on, but uh, just uh, a little step over, but uh, lost possession. Kashmir, just a little bit messy, aren't they here, Harry? They're 
threatening to turn it over in some dangerous spots. Here now is the Irishman, Coughlin. Closed down by Middleton. Has support though. Matheson. Looking to create space for the shot. Goes wide. Straight back in. Handy from Kashmir. Coughlin goes down and a penalty is given. So, Garvin Coughlin has gone down. The referee has adjudicated here that the challenge was late, illegal. Just backed in Haviland. What do you think, Harry? Well, I just think that would be... I actually thought Nick Coughlin there was... <laughs> was the perpetrator. I think he jumped across. He, he went Havlin. higher, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he went higher than, than Havilland. Yeah. But uh, I, I, think what's, I think what's in support of Garvin Coughlin here is that uh, he won the ball and that, that Havilland kind of turned his back. It was a, yeah, it was, a, it was a clumsy challenge, wasn't it? But, um, yeah, both of them, I guess, in the air and colliding, I, I guess. And you'd have to say, would it? If it wasn't in the box, would it be a free kick in any other part of the pitch, you know? Well, and again, the, the, the protest wasn't too strong. And, and often you can get a read from the players. It's uh, Garvin Coughlin, who uh, scored a penalty in the very first round, a 4-0 win over Miramar. Can he score his eighth of the season? Little hesitation. That is class. That is quality. And he does get his eighth goal of the season. And the visitors have uh, thrown a spanner in the Auckland United works here. Yeah, well taken penalty. Nice little, just a little bit of a pause there to see which way Mac White was gonna, was gonna dive and just yeah, coolly slotted it in the opposite direction. It's yeah, still a bit of a limp. So he extends his margin at the top of the Golden Boots uh, race. Uh, haven't got details of the Auckland City scorers in what was uh, looking like a 3-1 win over Christchurch United, but uh, that takes uh, Garvin Coughlin up to uh, eight goals now, following a, a hat-trick in the 4-2 win over Napier City Rovers. But uh, crucially, it gives his team a lead here at Keith Hay Park, and uh, on the live ladder, if you like, uh, Harry, right now they would jump a point ahead of Auckland United. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, very, it's Bit of a cluster in those first, well, the yeah, Olympics sort of, as we talked about at the top, very uh, a couple of weeks to go, and they providing they can maintain their good form are there or thereabouts. And then there's four four teams that sit under that. Realistically, have got a chance of finishing second. I'm dare I say, sort of Melville sitting just outside the top uh, the top five, probably with a lot of work to do and, and relying on results to go their way. But yeah, as it as it sits now, you know. Coughlin looks like his, that, that, uh, that challenge a few moments ago from Haviland has really given him some, some problems. Well, I, I, I think it's a, it's a day for talking about dead legs because uh, we're told that uh, uh, Luke Tung is out of this match uh, and has played for Kashmir right through the season with, with a dead leg. We saw Andrew Blake suffering from that very ailment. This, this perhaps is uh, more a concern around the calf muscle, the shin area. But uh, he looked to come up a little bit lame from the challenge from Haviland that led to the penalty. So this will be a real concern for Dan Schwartz because uh, the Kashmir technical number 10 is quality. And certainly in the attacking third, he's the spark for this Kashmir yeah, technical team. Absolutely. I, I, you know, talking about... You know, their their aspirations for the season. I think as a as a coach, you, your best player goes down like that after he's your guy, after 50 isn't minutes. he? Yeah. I mean, it's almost you know. You're just hoping he can. Well, he's he doesn't look too bad. I think it's like he's no any issues. I think he'll come back on. But again, it's only what, 20 minutes. We'll see how the next sort of 10, five or 10 minutes go with his fitness. Driven in by United, but driven straight into the breadbasket of Danny Knight. Schwartz looking to uh, play out from the back. 
and uh, United uh, looking to apply something of a press but uh, Redfern was a little bit of a lone ranger now they've got themselves a little more organized and Auckland United do force the mistake as uh, Coughlin has got back out there still doesn't look great Harry does look to be treading a little lightly on that uh, left leg of his still grimacing that this may be a concern still for Kashmir technical but they will give him all the time he needs to try and run that off Raniga Den High getting quite advanced uh, for his uh, role Maisy run is uh, brought to a halt and here is Coglin now he measures the pass for Donkers gets his head up the striker might fancy uh, a direct route to goal what a challenge that is there's a free kick given away I, I say the challenge from the Auckland United player I think it's Blake in trouble again it was a very well timed challenge but has he paid a price here in fact, it's Haviland. It's Haviland, yeah. He just came in from the side, and that uh, Ross Haviland, he's been in the battles and the wars this afternoon. Haviland's uh, in a bit of pain. We've seen two or three moments. We're going to have uh, three or four minutes added at the end of this first half already, given the... Uh, breaks we've had for a, a couple of injuries and uh, Donkers picks up a yellow card not in a way it's harsh Harry it was just Again, timing it wasn't, was, it? wasn't it just a, Ian, it was very clumsy just timing he, he just got there a split second behind Ross uh, Haviland so we're getting news from the ground that uh, the injury to Coughlin was exactly what we had described initially a bit of a a dead leg to the shin, though, with a, with a knee colliding with the shin of uh, Coughlin. So he might be feeling that. But Auckland United are more concerned with how their skipper's feeling right now. He left the game a couple of weeks ago, didn't he, against uh, Auckland City with what we thought was a hamstring issue. But he certainly uh, hasn't missed any game time since. So we can only assume that might have been cramp for Haviland, but this one looks uh, a little more of a concern. Yeah, you can sense for a couple of key plays this afternoon, right? Haviland and uh, Conklin as well. Andrew Blake, as he's touched on. A bit of a Charlie as well. Schwartz under pressure, and he puts his keeper under a little too. And Knight responded with the, the right approach there just to uh, clear his lines. Barber Ryan can get his head up over halfway. Nice little dummy to get rid of Dan Hyatt. Should have uh, taken the opportunity there, I, I feel, Harry, to uh, shoot on goal. Uh, Matheson had half a chance, didn't he? Yeah, he's got a lovely left foot, Lyle Matheson, and you absolutely pull the trigger from that sort of distance just, out, just outside the D on that type of angle it's perfect to just curl it inside that uh, that post tell you what there's more grimacing out there than a, at a gooning competition They're just players in pain everywhere Haviland is the latest to be just trying to as we say in the game a run off the injury see Coughlin there is just still limping and looking, still looking like he's in some discomfort. You have to, uh, if you're playing a little game of Nostradamus, you have to think that uh, he's very little chance of seeing this one out, Garvin Coughlin. The immediate concern is the minutes remaining in this match. But uh, I'm sure Dan Schwartz will also 
just be casting an eye towards their final two encounters. They play Wellington Phoenix at home and then Christchurch United away in their final two matches. Both, when you look at the form guide this season, both matches that they'll fancy their chances to pick up for three points. They'll fancy them even more if their number 10 is available. Faye. Redfern can't control. And Kashmir, what have they got on the counter? Donkers looks up. Looks for supports and uh, still has possession here, Donkers. How was he allowed to make his way through? And eventually, Mac Waite got out there to just pick it up, much to the relief of the Auckland United supporters. Raniga. Harry, I, I know whilst uh, I'm watching the football, I know you're keeping an eye on Garvin Coughlin just to see uh, if there's any improvements uh, in his uh, running gait. Danny Knight uh, just slowing proceedings down, aren't they, Kashmir, at uh, almost every opportunity. Just trying to take the sting out of the game. Kashmir. Throw down over halfway, but uh, Harshay Raniga is able to recover. And uh, Haviland's uh, speaking of recoveries, looks like he's uh, running a, a little more freely. Coglin's definitely still a heavy limp in his side. I don't know how long he's going to last. He's in trouble, I think. He's in trouble. I hope it's not uh, long lasting, but uh, as Mirati is, uh, well, I thought blocked. It's uh, referee Mick Waldron saying there was enough of the football in that challenge. Mirati can't keep it in play, so a couple of moments there go against the uh, Auckland United fullback. Isaac uh, again taking his time with the throw and then just uh, got put under pressure by Blake and a, a double blast on the whistle suggests that uh, a change is pending and it may well be this man who's uh, gone back down onto the deck uh, and, and this will be a huge disappointment for Kashmir there's a handshake with the referee and Garvin Coughlin's afternoon is over. He has impacted the game. He won the penalty. He scored the penalty. But now he can do no more. As Jacob Richards replaces the Coughlin. And Kashmir Technical lose their best attacking player. No disrespect to the others in the side, but uh, he's the guy they go to. He's, my, he's everything going forward for... Um Kashmir Tech is, is going through their number 10 historically. I mean, we've seen him so this season being kind of a one-man band up front at times. Um, the number of goals he scored, I think, you know, Lyle Mathis, and this is an opportunity for him because I think he's he's shown glimpses of some, some nice interplay with, with Coughlin in previous games, scored a couple of goals. So maybe the scene is set for him to perhaps step up and, and, and take that mantle. Then I can't wrap the left foot around that, but so this is crucial now for Kashmir. Uh, survive and, and it may be too strong a term as we see another look at this uh, shooting chance from outside the area they're, they're not under huge pressure here but when I say survive just maintain the scoreline for as long as they can and preferably of course through to half time let uh, Dan Schwartz then have a chat maybe change things maybe look at how they can try and get through the second half and maintain what Coughlin's helped them get to this point as Donkers Gets one in the back of the head, wins the free kick. Oh, 
you know, this is also going to be a bit of a G up for Auckland as well when you see the the opposition, you see their best player go off injured after 20 odd, 27 minutes. It's certainly, I know, speaking from experience too, Drew, it certainly gives you a lift when you know one of the key players in the opposition have gone off, you know, have limped off with injury. Or, or the danger is you sit back a little bit thinking, ah, our job's just got easier. Yeah. And what I'm curious to see is the urgency and the desperation. And uh, and I think it needs to come now. It's no good leaving that sort of desperation until the last 10 minutes of a match. Bring it now. Your season's on the line. So let's see if Auckland United have that sort of a response in them. Middleton, he scuffs that one wide of Danny Knight's far post. How often do you see it, Harry, that suddenly teams throw caution to the wind last 10 minutes of the game? You know, play with that passion it's, earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I do think, and maybe it's the tactical approach of both teams, this is so far one of the slower-paced yeah. games that I, we've seen. Yeah, I think yeah, both sides here not wanting to lose, as we talked about earlier on, right? So I guess it's going to be up to forget it. Now they're playing chase our football. So does he change anything, you know, with with uh, the likes of Coughlin now off the uh, out of the match? Does he change things tactically? Does he... They have to take some risk. At, at, I mean, 31 minutes, right? We're not even halfway through the game we're talking about. So I think a long, long way to go. But they definitely aren't showing signs that, you know, they're, they're willing to push players forward and, and, and try and get this goal back earlier on or even before half time. Approaching 32 minutes played. And it is that penalty that separates the two teams. I guess the longer the game goes on, the more settled or that Kashmir Tech become, and I guess it's it's throwing the throwing the, the gauntlet back at Auckland United. You know how, how lift your urgency, how desperate are you to, to get back into this game? There's a Gaskin, one of the two changes at the start of the match from last week for Kashmir Tech, and as we've just described, they've got a third change was uh, not in the script with Richards out there and he'll play the best part of an hour Blake United uh, patient in the build up the ball just uh, catching a, a couple of bobbles uh, through this movement but they maintain possession the shot was uh, not powerful by any stretch there by Fay. Middleton tried to get a piece of it in the area. And Kashmir just again living a little dangerously. And certainly uh, it, it doesn't appear to be like for like. From what I've seen so far, Harry, Richards has not dropped into that number 10 role. And they do appear to be a little more exposed uh, and, and have fewer personnel yeah, in the attack. It certainly looks third. like, yeah, the Kian Dongas is, is the certainly the, the furthest man left the park and Richards has sort of dropped in to really keep the, that midfield nice and tight. They'll, they'll play Donkers up front and then they'll play the you know, likes of Matheson and, and Barbara Ryan just, just in behind. Here is uh, the sub who perhaps hasn't quite got the tempo of the game with the, the weight that he put on that pass and this is why it's crucial. That, that is live. That is live. Great work by uh, our team. Live ladder. Kashmir Technical go ahead of Auckland United. Reminding you that uh, Auckland City have uh, picked up uh, a win today. And in fact, by my calculations, will be on top of the table on 16 points. But Kashmir Leapfrog United on the live ladder right now. So, uh, after what, by their high standards, uh, Harry, has been a, a scratchy season at times, Auckland City. That's that's a big win for them, isn't it, today? 3-1 yeah. over Christchurch to uh, keep them in contact with Wellington Olympic. And uh, Olympic, of course, play the Wellington Phoenix in this round. Yeah, I think that, in that Christchurch game, Eddie, Eddie Wilkinson missed a penalty to potentially put it at two all with about 15 minutes to go in that game but 
Not to be a difficult place to go and play down in Christchurch. It's on the, it's on the obviously the, the artificial turf down there as well. United trying to pass their way through a congested midfield. And in the way was Lapsley, who was asking for a little help from the referee and uh, eventually got it. And we're hearing that that uh, Auckland City result is now confirmed 3 2. Auckland City have got there, so Christchurch did get one back. And uh, the uh, missed penalty will make it all the more difficult for them when they put the head on the pillow tonight, losing that one 3 2. But Auckland City pick up three points. conditions uh, we spoke about it. it it's very hot very humid after recent rain in Auckland and uh, maybe that's uh, just uh, having a, a bigger influence on the speed of this game than I thought it might but uh, it really is Kashmir content just to watch Auckland United pass the ball across their back four Dan Hyers involved but United are patient at the moment, Harry, but do they need to be a little more incisive? Yeah, I'd just like to see more of this player on the ball, more of Oli Fay. Out wide they go. murati has got forward. So the cross is blocked and uh, well blocked by McIsaac. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, even Nicholas and Brano. I think they're two key players for uh, Auckland United moving forward. It's Oli Fay and Zabrano. I'd love to see them more involved. Set piece opportunity, and they've had a couple of hitters uh, towards, if not on goal. They go far post uh, again, and they do dominate in the air, Auckland United. So that one cleared away. It'll be another corner. Well, they'll switch sides, but uh, perhaps take a similar approach. Brano looking to annoy Danny Knight. Be careful not to give a free kick away, but just looking to a blocker's line of sight, if nothing else. Knight tries to come out and doesn't get there. And perhaps so Zambrano was doing the right thing, and there is the goal. So he jumps out from having gotten the way of the keeper legally, and then he's the first one to react. So Auckland United are level, and Zambrano becomes the second United player this season to go beyond one goal. That's his second. They just didn't deal with the initial corner well, did they, Kashmir? No, this was the, the cross back from uh, United. It's a tidy finish too from Zimbrano. Very tidy finish with a nice pace off that, uh, that ball back across. I think it was Curtis Mogg. Matheson. So Kashmir unable to maintain that advantage through until half time. Richards, as in Sam Richards, Jacob also out there on the park. A strong challenge. So Kashmir through their skipper. Tom Schwartz. Again, they look to take the pace out of the game. Any hopes of uh, defending for the best part of 70-odd uh, minutes uh, now gone. Marathi. Zambrano, does that just lift the spirits and the intent here of Auckland United? Fay, always a danger. Pulls that one back near post Redfern. It's another corner. Yeah, they move the ball well there from side to side to Auckland United. See... I think it's, it's clearly a, an example that if you move the ball quickly, you're getting you're overlapping runs. Only Fay on that occasion. Nice ball in to the near post for Josh Redfin. Near post headed away. You 
you do sense that uh, Auckland United, uh, perhaps part of the scout, is uh, that they do fancy themselves at set-piece time. Danny Knight's not the biggest keeper, is he, Harry? And I think they have looked to put a little pressure on, both with Zambrano in his positioning, but also the delivery. They're almost inviting Knight to come out and control things, perhaps with a, with a view to uh, a, a mistake or two being made, as we saw there. Intercepts Redfern, great strike straight at night, had some power. Josh uh, Redfern, the 21 year old, uh, had uh, one part of the equation that was the power, just didn't quite have the accuracy. A meter or two either side of night, and they may well. Have turned a, a 1 0 deficit into a, a 2 1 lead in double quick time. Yeah, just have to be careful they don't drop too far back now. You see, Donkers is well inside his own half. That first line of defence is in behind the, you know, the, the centre circle on the Cashmere uh, Tech side. You're inviting pressure. Haviland. He and Andrew Blake uh, picked up early knocks. Uh, they look to have recovered. And the story of the first uh, half includes uh, a sadder tale for Garvin Coughlin, a Kashmir technical number 10 who picked up a knock and couldn't recover. He's been substituted. Looks like uh, Ollie Fay may have switched wings, come across on this right wing side now. They've dropped right back. They're not listening to you, Harry. They are so deep. They are going to break some toes on Danny Knight in a minute or two. Just saw in that little snapshot. Well, well, well I think when that um, when you're in that sort of situation, when you do get the ball at the back and you look up, Ken Donkers is your is your so is your your top man. Like he's leading the line, but he's he's 15 he, meters yeah, away. Yeah, he's like 10 meters from you. So they need to make they need to stretch. Um, that back line, at least um, keep him as, as, as high as you can. So at least you've got, you've got an out if you need to kind of be more direct or actually relieve some pressure. But if he's kind of 10 metres away from you and you're trying to knock it long or try and clear your lines, you're only essentially res surrendering possession for, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. Well, it is that man Donkers who wins a free kick here and uh, they get on with it uh, quickly. So they're not looking to set up at uh, set piece time and get players forward Richards for Knight and from an attacking free kick in the opposition half they find themselves back with their keeper they maintain possession though switch of it's play from Ballard is not accurate yeah it is unfortunate though Dewey that you know you one player changes the whole dynamic of your of your squad or of your team of you know the impetus and the tactics on the park you know Coughlin went off what 10 minutes ago and we they just haven't been out being the same team without him haven't they yeah. it's it's so unfortunate now. Blake who is we described uh, with Faye switching to the right, Blake goes to the left. Mog for Haviland. Switch of play from Mog. He delivered the cross for the goal. That was accurate as well to Marathi, who uh, just showed a little bit too much of the ball. Well defended by McIsaac. But no pressure exactly, here. It's exactly what um, you were talking about a few moments ago. Yeah, Donkers needs to be on the halfway line. You know, he needs to be, you know, Haviland and, and Curtis Mogg need to be worried about Kian Donkers. Where is he? You know, is he going to get in behind me? But it's just too easy when everything's in front of you for Haviland and for Mogg. 
Sembrano into the area. Red Fern just eluding the Auckland United number nine. Yeah, we've talked uh, a few times this season about, about teams trying to affect a, a high press, a high in terms of on the pitch and energy. The opposite is this low block. <laughs> it's, it's, it's low on energy and it's so deep. It is so far in their own half that uh, there's just no pressure yeah. on Auckland United and that's wayward. They can't afford to do that, but it's yeah. turned over straight we're away. We're just lucky that the referee's going to blow his whistle for half time in about, you know, three or four minutes. They're just, they're happy to be play the game without the ball at the moment. Technical there. Maradi tight on the touchline, has support from Middleton. And uh, corner is the decision, so they can set up again at set-piece time. And Middleton won't be one of their targets. It'll be the likes of Haviland, Mogg, Den Haier, certainly to try and win the initial headed duel. Zambrano again is in close proximity to Danny Knight. Driven beyond Knight towards the far post. Haviland, strong, too strong. Just a little uh, shoulder, a little too aggressive according to uh, the referee. Ross Haviland says, uh, that's me in every challenge ref. Nothing illegal there. He is a strong player, isn't he, Ross Haviland, the 30-year-old? Must have been cramped a couple of weeks ago, Dewey, because I think hammies, if it's just a, a pinch or a tightness of your ha hammies, have got to be the worst soft tissue um, well, tight injuries. hamstrings, two weeks. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, you can play, like you said, with a cork or a Charlie or a dead leg, or, you know, you can strap your ankle up if you roll it, but hammies are so, so difficult. So it must have been cramped a couple of weeks ago because he's certainly looking lively this afternoon. Maradi, Zambrano, eventually goes back to Maradi. That time the cross doesn't get beyond the first defender. Blake uh, allows a, a couple of bounces and that just cost him valuable time. Recovered well. Yeah, but they, they aren't even, you know, putting pressure on the ball. You know, they're dropping back two really yellow yellow walls there for for Kashmir Tip. But look where Donkers is. You it, know, Donkers is, it's, you know, they, they're, they're quite happy to play the game without the ball and just when they do get possession is, is just playing these long balls forward to to really just to ease pressure now they've got you know they've got five or six seconds now to, to get themselves push themselves up and get ready for the next wave well perhaps their approach is uh, let, let's take it as deep as we can into the match at 1-1 and then and then we'll take some more risks then we might look to uh play a little more aggressively on the counter. Certainly Dan Schwartz will be keen to get into the sheds and uh, reassess things and see uh, what gas they have left in the tank from an attacking perspective anyway. Oh, that's cheaply given away by Haviland. What have they got now on the counter, Kashmir? Matheson advancing and ignored. A strike on goal should have been better from Barbara Ryan. Well, that would have made a laughing stock of you and I, Harry, had they taken the yeah, lead. Absolutely. Because they pinched it here, and Barber Ryan has to hit the target he did from there. He did everything right, didn't he? I think it was a good run too. I think it was from Matheson just ahead of him, taking sort of a, taking a defender out of the picture there. Should have at least hit the target, Barber Ryan. Well, that little piece of play. Uh, perhaps suggest they're on the right track, Kashmir. Yeah, <laughs> we're the ones that have got it wrong, I think, Jimmy. I mean, if they keep playing on the break like that, and they can get one in the back of the net, good on them. Well, it certainly gives them hope with that uh, great chance, albeit one that was uh, spurned uh, right on the half-time break. Nick Waldron says that's enough, gets a little handshake at half-time. Job well done by the officials. They're content with their work. Uh, the respective uh, sets of players might think there's more work to do. It was... Uh, Garvin Coughlin, who opened the scoring in the 18th minute from the penalty spot. He's since departed with an injury. The equaliser came from 
Nicholas Sambrano after 38 minutes. And these two teams go to the sheds at the halftime break, level at one apiece. Atkin swinging this one in. Simon's nowhere. And it's a goal from Taylor O'Brien. Who else? The Eastern Suburbs. Lovely ball through for Devin Jackson. Has a little shot. Oh, lovely place there by Devin Jackson. Nice little side foot. Pass to his Samoa. 2-0 Eastern Suburbs. Up enthusiastic eastern suburbs crowd there tonight. Free Johnson now. Again down this left hand flank. Ruby Nathan a lot of time to pick a oh, oh, pick a shot. Number two for Ruby Nathan. Nathan. Just curled that round. Any foot unable to get anywhere near that one. She had so much time as well. O'Brien, lovely bit of work past Jaden Watts inside the box. Taylor O'Brien, and it's a third goal for Nicola Metem. A wonderful bit of work on the right hand side from Taylor O'Brien. And a comfortable finish from Nicole Metem. It's a complete all round team that uh, works hard for each other. Oh, Takeda. Oh, what a great goal by Takeda. And she cuts on the inside onto her left foot, strikes it perfectly into the top left hand corner. All in. Far post. For oh, lovely bit of work. Oh, what a goal! Lara Smith. What a wonderful strike. She can't believe it herself. Jackson gets a little touch off to Wilford Carroll has a shot. Oh, it is a shot and a half. Wilford Carroll. That's a sucker punch right there for Western Springs. And what a left-footed rocket by Wilford Carroll. Patterson, way we pass Hirano intercepts that on that occasion. Garcia, Hirano now, one-on-one. -on -one. Here is Hirano. Oh, great footwork, and it's, and it's in, and it's a goal <laughs> from Hirano. Well, thought, thought that one must may get away from her, but she did choose to find the back of the net on that occasion. Bina Hirano, a bit of pressure playing off for Western Springs. One on one, it really does well. And on target, what a strike! Petra Buick, fantastic strike. What a run from the substitute. Not really deserved two. She's been quite uh, like a star for Canterbury when she since she's been on, trying to force things. What a fantastic strike by her. Settle again. Yoshida again opens her, opens her body up so well. Allows her to play that one first time. A shot from Yoshida, and it's a goal. Michaela Foster could not get that to that one. It's Saki Yoshida. The third goal for Eastern Suburbs this afternoon. Well worked goal from Yoshida. Oh, lovely turn. That's beautiful from Painenberg. And she released the pass. She does to Colpi. Best football of the match so far. To the uh, edge of the penalty area. And that is yeah. the best goal of the match. And that is superb. Tapuru with the finish but beautifully crafted. And it all started with Emma Painenberg. What a turn in midfields and releasing Colby. And again, she found a teammate with the cross. So some great goal scoring action uh, from the Women's National League and uh, confirming 
the goal scoring charts and in fact uh, updated further with Taylor O'Brien getting a couple she's now up onto 16 goals in nine matches but uh, she is dominating the golden boot race in that national women's league in eastern suburbs featuring strongly through Devon Jackson and Juliet uh, Lucas as well on that uh, golden boot uh, page one as we confirm results in eastern suburbs uh, if they haven't got both feet in a grand final, they've they've got one foot there, courtesy of that 9-1 result over Central Football. Northern Rovers are 4-0 winners over Capital Football. And uh, two matches due to be played tomorrow. Canterbury United host Western Springs at English Park. And Auckland United are back here at Keith Hay Park, the women's team up against Southern. So that's why... I reckon they've got both feet in that uh, grand final. Uh, Harry Easton Suburbs, what a season. 10 from 10. And uh, it's the Northern teams chasing them in Western Springs and Northern Rovers. But Eastern Suburbs have just looked so good. Yeah, them and Eastern, uh, Western Springs have certainly been the standouts for me um, in this sort of competition. Really difficult for those federation sides, Capital and Central Football. It's so tough, obviously, from a a training perspective, a weekly planning perspective for those those uh, those federations or those those teams, players coming from you know outside major areas and all commuting in and out, and it's really it's difficult for those federation sides. But um, you know, Southern United are, are in there, um, twelve points and, and and pushing hard. Beautiful conditions uh, here at uh, Keith A Park, uh, and uh, it's not been the fastest paced match in the National Men's League here, the weather conditions. Uh, we're looking for our highlights package uh, from the first half from the men's match here between Auckland United and Kashmir Technical. A match that we've described as must win and it's this man, Garvin Coughlin, who's been the story of the first half for, for, for yeah. good and bad reasons. Yeah, nice, uh, nice strike from Coughlin. This was the... Um Penalty, which we you know, I thought was a bit of a harsh one for Ross Evelyn, but nonetheless, Coughlin, again, as always, deadly from 12, 12 yards, as to his uh, goal tally for the season, but then limped off after about 27 minutes. This was the equaliser. Danny Knight not dealing with the initial corner, and Zamog putting it back in, and Zambrano with a, as you said, Harry, that, that's a quality finish from the Chilean. He had to just cushion that volley, didn't need any extra pace. And then right at the death, that was a chance for Aidan Barber Ryan to uh, send Kashmir back in front. And uh, they have to uh, be content with one all at uh, half time. Auckland United, though, certainly dominating proceedings after the departure of the Irishman for Kashmir Technical. Auckland City confirming there. Win 3-2 over Christchurch United. Uh, Christchurch made it interesting for the last uh, 14 minutes or so in getting that second goal, but they did miss a penalty as well. And uh, Miramar Rangers and Melville United about a half an hour behind this match at Keith Hay Park. No goals there as yet. So that is the live table. So Auckland City go top with that three points. They're on 16 points. Wellington Olympics still have a game to play, of course, in this round. They will visit... The Knicks in a Wellington derby tomorrow. Auckland United losing pace if they don't pick up three points here on 11. Birkenhead on 10 and Kashmir Technical 9. That's why for both Kashmir and Auckland, they must win mm. to keep pace with the top two. Remember, one round in the regular season and then the top two qualify for the grand final. There's a long strike oh, from Howison, and it's cleared the goalkeeper, caught him completely unawares with the wind, and that is one of the best long-range goals you'll ever see. Are we, are we picking goal of the season already from Cam Howison? I, I think so. Rover, Matt Todd Smith. Back onto his right foot. That's a decent run, and that is a decent goal. A more than decent goal, in fact. William Pierce and Miramar Rangers have been opened up.
with a lovely piece of play and creativity by Christchurch United. United on the counter now. An opportunity through Zambrano. He was the full width of the pitch. On this left wing side. Opportunity for Fay. The under 20 international and they've got the opening goal. And that is stunning. What a finish on the volley from Zambrano. And that is counter-attacking football at its best. Soaking up the pressure, United. And within two or three passes, the ball is in the back of the net. Oh, Casual with receiving that ball. And now the space here for Jacob Richards. Oh, that's a fine finish by Jacob Richards. And it came from a Melbourne United mistake in midfield, but there's no doubting the quality of this volley. Switch of play. That might be the only way Joe Lee gets possession is with a 40 metre pass. Shuffles in Tade, hits it spot and hits the back of the net. And there is the threat, there is the danger. And Auckland United pay the biggest price. And Emi Tade scores again for Auckland City. There's some pender now. Can they find the delivery? Yes, they can! And Josh Redfern just plants that one into the back of the net. You could hear the cries from Scotty Hales. He knew what was coming. And the delivery found the striker. And Auckland United go 1-0 up. Auckland City are both lucky, but uh, they still give possession away. So shooting opportunity, deflection oh. just hits the post. And on the rebound, they scored early. This is a stunning opening from Birkenhead, and it's their captain, Sam Burfoot who scores and it seems incredible after just three and a half minutes to say that it's been coming, but it has. <laughs> nice down by Joe Poole and uh, Rabok has managed to find his way past one opponent. He's got uh, Wilkinson just to his left who's lined up the shot. Oh, oh that's goal. a fine finish. What a goal by Eddie Wilkinson. Set up by Rabok. Christchurch back in business. Here is Tade with Howison sweeping forward. This is looking likely here for Auckland City. Howison early ball in, and there is the goal. Beautifully done. Ryan De Vries opens the scoring. Superb combinations from the attacking trio. Kelly onto the right foot. Beautiful pass. Jack Henry Sinclair's onside. Nice goal. That's a brilliant finish by Jack Henry Sinclair. One of the most exciting players in the National League Championship. And Wellington Olympic double the lead. Tade, heavy first touch, maintains possession. Tade, near post, what an equaliser! Emmy Tade, you are a magician! Back live at uh, Keith Hay Park. And it is uh, Auckland United 1, Kashmir Technical 1. Uh, the hope that we might see a few more of those uh, quality strikes in the second half here. And uh, whilst Auckland United might be favourites, uh, given the change in the Kashmir Technical personnel, we saw just in the dying moments of that half that uh, Aidan Barber Ryan with a, a great opportunity that Kashmir will try and catch United on the break. Andrew Dewhurst with you alongside uh, Harry Nata. What do you think Dan Schwartz will have said to his troops? What do you think he can change tactically to try and uh, put some more pressure perhaps on United? Well, it looks like they've taken, obviously, Goblin came off obviously midway through that first half and Richards just went and sat as another number in the, in the middle of the park and only left Kian Donkers up front by himself, who obviously the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they, he kind of was was just a, a back back four back five for um, tech and then you know 
four or five players in front. So I think from a shape perspective, they still need Donkers and whoever it may be, Barbara Ryan on one side, Matheson on that, they still need to be pushing up and putting pressure on um, the defenders at the back four uh, for Auckland United. So Curtis Morgan and Haviland have had it so easy other than that last chance, as you alluded to, for Barbara Ryan towards the end of the first half there. So they've still got it all to play for. Um, uh, Kashmir Tech, we've seen the table there. They need to win this game just to stay in touch or at least not lose to give themselves a sniff. Goodness me. Haviland, nosebleed territory. Faye drives that one well handled by Danny Knights. It's, uh, if we're wondering about Kashmir Technical, I, I, I wonder if that run of Haviland just told us of the approach of Auckland United, the centre-back and skipper carrying the football up and into the Kashmir penalty area so perhaps the chat from Jose Figuera is that uh, we start taking risks we start going looking for three points here we've just heard that our mates from down Dominion Road have picked up three in Christchurch so we have to win this game Reniga does not keep that in play. Yeah, I think nothing less than three points this afternoon will be what Forget will be looking at now, you know, considering the obviously the changes that Cashmere had to make in that first half with Team Blake off limping off with that, uh, that leg injury. So it just it means that United now 45 minutes to go in this 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 game really to start putting some really consistent pressure on Kashmir Tech. Blake was trying to be the architect of uh, a little of that pressure. Goes back to uh, win possession again. Let's just see if uh, they still have to be accurate in, in what they do United of course but they just need to show perhaps a little more urgency and it's this man that might provide the incisive pass to break down Kashmir, Den Haya Mirati who may as well play as a winger I feel in this second half down to the byline and drives that one with far too much power created the space but then uh, just couldn't resist putting his right boot through that football now the Ryan goes back to Knights and uh, Schwartz if that was good fortune or a good management but it uh, looked like a bit of an anywhere will do sort of a clearance but it found a teammate Mac Waite has had something of an armchair ride really he hasn't had too much to do when the chances have come Kashmir have not forced the United keeper into a save Donkers, Barbara Ryan, and that sets Kashmir onto the back foot. But uh, Auckland United got set up on that occasion anyway for the counter attack, so they just take the momentum out of the attack. Yeah, I think Auckland United really have the particularly the quality in the middle of the park with Den Hyatt, Zimbrano just in front, just a you control the tempo if they, as they have done for the last sort of 15 minutes, 20 minutes. The last uh, later stages of the first half. Opening up here now, and looking for Fay in the penalty area, who continued his good run after initially having possession. And he might be one of a number of players, but we haven't seen a lot of Ollie Fay, have we, yeah. in an attacking sense? So get him on the ball a, a bit more and have him run at defenders. Yeah, I think we touched on that in the first half, didn't we? With, you know, love to see more Ollie Fay and Nicholas Zambrano as well, two very talented players. 
Oliver Middleton as well. We kind of see him sitting in with Dan Heyer being, I guess, the engine room of, of the middle of the park. You've got uh, Machuca on the bench as well. Uh, Ignacio Machuca, another player with, with good technique and a bit of skill. And of course, the Canadian uh, guy, Frank uh, Osamo Penda, who scored uh, what proved to be the winner against uh, Auckland City. So there are options for Jose Figueira. This is building nicely, and they do have players forward here. Marathi just overran it into the penalty area. Still somehow have possession through Redfern. Driven across, eluding the keeper and eluding Marathi, who had continued his run from right fullback. And found himself at the far post from a right wing cross. A nice bit of play from Marathi. Unfortunate that this, this one just flashed. Good pace on the cross too. That should have been number two for, for Auckland United. Redfern arguing here that uh, Danny Knight had essentially taken a touch. A little bit like a, a charge down rugby field uh, with a conversion but uh, Blake now down to the byline makes room pulls it back and again the cross eludes a teammate but Auckland United are starting to dominate proceedings now seven minutes into the second half over Ryan turning possession over he sets off on a, another advanced run. Here he is back in possession of Linda Change with Blake. Kashmir almost inviting Auckland United just to send players forward at will. That uh, invitation though, Harry, sometimes might also be called the setting of a trap. Potentially, yeah. You've got, to, you've got to get players forward, though, to, I guess, capitalise on when you do get the ball or you do break out play. The ability to spring forward from, from deep, air, deep areas, I think he, he definitely plays with, with pace or players that can get forward very quickly because they are literally two blocks of, you know, two blocks of five. turned over Barbara oh, Ryan when it, when, it, when it was the uh, call and his teammate Chester Gaskin did that even better won the throw Jacob Richards with a foul on Dan Hyatt take your pick uh, a little grab of the shirt or uh, a clipping of the heels Haviland again trying to spark an attack. He's done well, the skipper. Faye. Haviland with the left foot. Uh, perhaps uh, getting forward shows great intent, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, a 28 metre strike with the left foot is necessarily yeah. Ross Haviland's go. I guess it's just the confidence of Auckland United at the moment with you. Your central defenders up there trying to take a strike from about 25 yards. Just got to find the right mix in the recipe here, Auckland United. Patience is one of the ingredients, but urgency has to be there as well. Zambrano for Blake. And Blake kind of got caught halfway between the two options there. One to drive it across in front of goal and the other, the pullback. It ended up being a, a little bit of uh, neither, but they do win a corner. And forward 
comes Mog. Haviland there too, just advancing into the picture. They go short. Kashmir have to be alert. Now driven to the near post. They'll have another chance to set it up, Auckland United. well at that near post the whistle on the play Middleton it was that went down Kashmir can't clear the danger near post tried the uh, clever little flick uh, around the back did Redfern couldn't get enough uh, leather on the football Schwartz for Matheson who's even uh, more so if we describe Ollie Fay as not being influential enough for United. Matheson's not had enough touches for Kashmir. And that uh, does not trouble Mac Wait. It's better from Kashmir Tech when he, you know, getting players forward. I mean, there was three or four players in advance of the ball there, out of the middle of the park. Haviland was uh, cramping a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Harry, how's he going to go in the heat here and with these advanced runs that he's uh, making? Oh, the Faye did really well. Middleton does enough to force an attacking throw. So, Oliver and Oliver. Not a law firm, but uh, operating down that left wing side for Auckland United. We're going to see a change, I think. Uh, William Stephen is on and it's Oliver Fay who departs so perhaps uh, Jose Figueira Harry has uh, a similar view to you that Fay just wasn't involved often enough unless there's a, a niggle an injury there for Fay but uh, he departs early yeah very quiet game for Oli Fay Yeah, to probably seeing things a little bit differently with um, the way he, I guess fate is, I wouldn't say he's having a bad game but he's not as influential as he as he historically has been for United so just hasn't had a lot of possession it, it's not that he's necessarily playing poorly it's just that he's not influenced the game and a big part of that is that he's just not been given possession in the right attacking areas nonetheless I'm a little surprised. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a, a tactical change, perhaps? It's William Stephen. Maybe that we're, they're still playing. It's lo I mean, both teams. It's you know, it's still we're still locked at uh, at one apiece. So both teams still have a lot to play for in the last sort of 30 odd minutes. Well, he, he did score against Olympic in a, in a losing effort last time out. So perhaps. Uh, this half an hour is as much reward for that. So William Stephen with an opportunity to change the course of this game. He has been largely unemployed, Mac Wait. If they do go on to win this, you can make a case that he does not deserve his win bonus, Harry. He's not had a lot to do. Is that too harsh on the goalkeeper's union? I think it might be. Donkers near post chance here. Mackwaite might have to be alert. Just took the final touch off Matheson. And uh, Auckland United again had just served a little reminder that Kashmir, they, they still are a threat. It is one of those days, isn't it, though, for Mackwaite that largely quiet, largely not having to feature, but as a keeper, he has to be alert yeah, for that one moment. Yeah, if it's a, a ball over the top, you've got to make a decision to come off your line and go and gather, or essentially play as a sweeper. Well, the hour ticks by, and I think we do need to see again just a, an upping of the desperation, the urgency,
Auckland United will, I'm sure, be well aware that Auckland City has picked up three points already earlier this afternoon. There's Stephen with the cross. Oh, a little bit of a shank with the clearance, and it's another corner. The pressure builds. by Zambrano for perhaps the first time in the match and uh, that eludes uh, everyone in an attacking sense and I thought Knight might let it go as well but he decided to grab it. Yeah, that was um, Den Heyer, I think. Uh, Den Heyer getting himself in, just failing to get a... It's a, it's a nice cross too. It's inviting for Michael Den Heyer to get on the edge of that. Middleton now. Blake has switched across to this left wing side, has support from Raniga, finds him now, the fullback, cuts back in, heavy touch, had time to pick a spot with the cross, Redfern now, keeper comes out, Redfern, has he made room? No, it's just gone over the byline. In fact, the flag is up, the flag is up for offside, Redfern looked perplexed, saying I kept it in ref, but in fact there, the touch from Raniga, Redfern, was adjudicated as offside. You sense, Harry, they are getting closer, aren't they, to a breakthrough, Auckland United, but look now, Kashmir on the break. Richards. Matheson can't control. Yeah, those are the balls that need to stick, you know, two or three passes and the next ball will in, in advance to in a, in a player in a forward position. Yeah, Matheson really has to do better. This is well won. Auckland United just uh, standing and watching for the moment. Marathi, it's his turn to be left a little lame after a challenge. Dan Hire wins it. Middleton stands on it. Zambrano comes away with it. Oh, he's looking for the, the Cam Howison there. And it may well have been an opportunity because uh, Knight was well advanced off his line, but the uh, strike on goal didn't quite have enough on it from Zambrano. Barbara Ryan for Matheson again. First touch is letting the South African down. They're just failing to hold on to the hold on to the ball or retain possession in those sort of areas, and they're good position. They're good areas too, just outside the box. You've got players running off you. Stephen Redfern collects what was a shot, leaves it there for Zambrano. And Stephen Cannon's off the substitute and is out for a goal kick for Kashmir. It's fascinating watching the two respective game plans here because that's what's at stake. Auckland City with their win today move to the top of the table. Olympic play the Phoenix tomorrow. Auckland United that's a live table if it stays a draw they move to 12. As a Kashmir technical it would be more damaging because they would be left on 10 points and potentially after today Harry both uh, after tomorrow I should say when the round concludes both Olympic and Auckland City could be, could be at away. least six points yeah, clear with away, only six they? to play for. I think that's Zabrano, I think that's gone down. So perhaps winded. That's Ranega. And uh, that's uh, an awkward blow. For Harshake Raniga. <laughs> so a chance for the uh, rest of the players just to uh, have a little breather. It is very warm in Auckland today. There's a breeze just taking the edge off a little bit. It's pretty humid, so a little drinks break is probably 
a good thing. But uh, Marsha Renega would rather it came about in different circumstances. Has he got a yellow card for Well, I can only Renega. assume that Nick Waldron said, you have to leave the park and then I'll signal for you to come back on. And, and I think Harshay might have said, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> That's all that could be. It's a... Uh, right. So it may have been uh, for the... I guess before the, he went down with that, um, that injury. Could have been something off the ball that we're hearing from the side. Okay, so Nick Waldron has a good memory. He did not let it slide, so we are indeed hearing from the ground that it was for an off-the-ball incident, so not related to the exchange that we just saw because it was it was like they're having a little chat. How are you going? And, oh, by You've the way... Drop, dropped an F-bomb <laughs> to the ref or something like that, you know? By the way, here's a yellow card. He is back on the pitch. United into the area. Is that a call for a penalty? No, Nick Waldron is right there and says plenty of football. Let's have a look here. It's Rahi, nice one too with Dan Higher. Gee, you think the uh, Ross Haviland and Coughlin sort of clash in the first half as a penalty. That one would... That one looked more like a penalty for me, Dewey. Yeah, it was hard to see. Here's a chance now into the penalty area. Donkers, he just got the ball a little too much under his own feet. But the game is starting to open up. United are creating chances, but we've just seen there again Kashmir. They're sitting, waiting very deep, but any opportunity to pounce on the counter-attack. Yeah, I thought the, the look we got, there was we had to still look through a lot of legs and credit Nick Waldron. He was right there and there appeared to be little if uh, any protest from Regent uh, Marathi. Here come Kashmir again. Matheson has Donkers to his right. It's been the tale of Lyle Matheson's game. He's just lost possession too easily. Richards trying to chip Mac Wait, but uh, even had that been on target, Wait was back in time. And the other piece on that one from, yeah, although it was a, a, a heavy touch from Matheson, and he lost position there, but he only had Donkers in front of him and he had about five Auckland United players around him. So Kashmir Tech have got to be more, I, I guess, aggressive in getting players forward. So we've got a delay here with uh, an injury concern. Looks like it might be Chester Gaskin. And it looks like a knee to me. They're giving it the old uh, test of the ACL and the, and the medial. I love that test, Harry, when the physio grabs and says, does this hurt? <laughs> and uh, the player just holds their breath and and it looks like the answer to the question was okay. that no it, it's not too bad back on his feet Gaskin although not looking too comfortable so substitution is in fact a May Declan Tyndall is out there So just confirming that uh, it is the end of uh, the road this afternoon for Gaskin, who came into the side in the absence of Stora and Tung. But uh, he too now makes way, and Declan Tyndall will play the remaining 20-odd minutes of this one. And you would expect he could be under pressure if he slots into that fullback role. sighting we just got there and here might be that Tyndall's gone further forward it's uh, Mr. Fixit Jacob Richards who's come on as a sub played in a holding midfield role then was playing left wing now he's gone to right fullback I think Harry the number seven for Cashmere yeah. 
Barbara Ryan finding room for the shot and just over the crossbar that's been the story of their day and Barbara Ryan's been guilty on more than a couple of occasions has to hit the target yeah nice bit of work you got a bit of a lucky lucky rebound from Nicholas Zambrano really should have hit the target Aiden Barbara Ryan he's had a couple of good chances hasn't he sights on goal They've just got to keep, you know, asking the question of, of Auckland United at the back with those types of, you know, passages where they are getting a, a shot away or putting pressure on, you know, Mackweight, albeit going over the over the crossbar or wide, but the uh, triple blast of the whistle usually indicates uh, there's a change of personnel, so everyone's attention turns to fourth official hard, the news of a change or changes so Andrew Blake makes way for Guy Frank Isome Pender Middleton runs into trouble in the form of Lapsley who comes away looks for support little nutmeg on Dan Hire was uh, threatening for Kashmir. And it's a confirmation of another change there with Marathi replaced by Fumia Ito. So Jose Figuera is ringing the changes, trying to see if they can find this second goal. They've got 18 minutes in which to do so to try and secure all three points. Crucial for Auckland United in their quest to make a grand final. So too for Kashmir. Don't count them out. They may have sat back. They may have gone into the lowest of low blocks for the best part of an hour. But, uh, they're still in it at 1-1. And finally, a shot on target. Very comfortable, though, for weight. Then higher. Ito. But, uh, Ito not yet uh, in tune with his uh, teammates. I said, Andrew, as long as the longer this game goes on, the more more comfortable uh, Kashmir Tech look. I mean, there's a, you know, not good Donkers. chance here for Donkers. Almost getting around the back, still has a shooting chance. It's blocked by Haviland. But, but your point, Harry, that I'm sure you're making was, was supported there by that little piece of play. The later you go into a game when you are sitting, the more of a threat you are on the counter yeah. because your more, opposition pushes players forward. More frustrating forward. The other, for the opposition as well. Oof. Richards almost uh, allowing Redfern in. This is a dangerous game they're playing, Kashmir. Tyndall. Snuck away from him by Raniga. 50-50 challenges uh, in midfield, and eventually it's uh, Kashmir that come away with it. Barbara Ryan. Donkers moves to his right. Barbara Ryan. Perhaps uh, should have tried to find Kian Donkers there. He's been willing, hasn't he? He has absolutely emptied the tank here. Aiden Barber Ryan, but he's got to find a bit more gas because there's 15 minutes still to play. Uh, outnumbered, double teamed if you like. Ballard, Sam Richards, the skipper, Schwartz, Tyndall. Good to cover from Den High was strong in the challenge. 
turned over cheaply though. Kashmir do have players forward. A drive uh, into the gloves of Mac Waite, but uh, in the last two or three minutes, Kashmir Technical have forced Mac Waite into a couple of saves, albeit standard ones. Yeah, I think it's, it's more, more confidence for Kashmir Tech. They are getting players forward. It's just those, again, you talked about Barbara Ryan there. We're just losing control or we see it a couple of times with Lyle Matheson in similar sort of areas as well. They just, yeah, this, the touch is just not, just not there. Middleton looks for support left wing side. Finds it in the shape of Stephen. Now Raniga has plenty of room in which to advance his cause. Kashmir again with the two lines of defenders, two lines of five. Ito for a left foot cross that somehow found a teammate. So Tyndall jumped in in front of Middleton. And the frustration will continue to build for Auckland United as we now tick up towards 77 minutes played. He's asking too much of Declan Tyndall. Auckland United. Time is against them now. Urgency coming into their game. Oh, a chance for Zambrano, and they've got the goal. And it's Nicholas Zambrano. Well, it's taken some time to come. He scored in the 38th minute, and now scores in the 78th minute and it was the substitute that knocked it across and he scored a couple in recent weeks from that range with the volley but this time was accurate with the header yeah look he just thoroughly deserved i mean nice build-up play from zimbrano some defender back across to zimbrano and, and static defending from cashmere tech because there were three or four players around him he found the gap a lovely executed header down to the right of Danny Knight. Well, they've got the reward that to their territorial and, and possession dominance deserved. And what it does do, of course, is completely change now the complexion of the last dozen minutes or so. Because now Kashmir really have no choice. They may as well lose this 3 or 4 1 as uh, lose it 2-1. They've got to take risks now to try and get back into a contest that they've uh, too often this afternoon been second best. Then higher. It's a spring in the step now of Auckland United. Kashmir don't start to press, Harry. Auckland United, let's see how clever they are. Let's see the likes of Haviland, uh, Raniga, you know, the experienced players, Den High. Let's see if they just uh, play a little keep ball and invite Kashmir to come and get it. Itso drives it across, almost a third goal. Just eluding the outstretched Josh Redfern. Yeah, lovely bit of play from Auckland United. Beautiful cross from Ito. And Redford, not for the first time, just a yard, a yard short of uh, finding the back of the net. Zambrano on a hat trick now. Then higher, looks to find the Chilean. Ito, he's been influential, and it was almost another one-two combination between that player and Zambrano. Jose Figueira is uh, 
Going to uh, make uh, another change, perhaps just to shore things up. So perhaps the more defensive minded, certainly for the last 10 minutes, uh, Ignacio Machuca replacing Oliver Middleton. I'm sure the instruction to Machuca is uh, indeed just to uh, keep what we've got. Perhaps sit alongside Den higher and just form a, a defensive midfield duo in front of the back four. Yeah, he's pretty much in the mould like a Zambrano at times as well. Machuca, sort of box-to-box -box type player. Again, fresh legs in the middle of the park for, uh, for Auckland United. Richards. For Tyndall. He's done well to wriggle out of a, a tight spot there. Schwartz with an important intervention, but he's dragged out of position. United couldn't capitalise. Now Tyndall has Donkers in the penalty area, so too Matheson. Good defensive work, but it is a corner for Kashmir Technical. They're not done just yet. Declan Tyndall's had uh, a lot of touches, Harry. Since yeah, he's he had a, bit a busy, uh, busy game since he's been on. He's looked lively. He's looked, tried to make things happen. I think he's actually provided a, a bit of a spark up front because we've seen the likes of Donkers also get forward. Initial headed clearance is a good one. There's a Kashmir player down in the Auckland United penalty area. William Stephen is a uh, oh, sniper. Where's the grassy knoll? Hey, eh? where's the grassy knoll? Stephen just got hit. <laughs> So uh, it looked like it might have been Cramp. I'm not sure if it was Donkers, Harry, but uh, Kashmir Technical for the moment uh, down to 10. It, it is, oh dear, it is Kian <laughs> Donkers. Oh, and when a player is cramping like that, you just about feel the pain. He's still down, he's still suffering, come on. Eventually being into it. Mac White there, there he goes. Just going to give him a few seconds there just to try and relieve that cramp. And it is, a, it is an absolutely dreadful feeling. Uh, he has, he's run himself to a standstill, literally. Kian Donkers, he'll be replaced by Yusuf Van Dam. So his uh, efforts on a personal level are to no avail, but there is still six minutes or so for his team to get something out of this game as Donker's day is done. And that's a reflection of the conditions. Warm, humid. If not a reflection of the pace of the game, which uh, especially early on was at times pedestrian. So both teams now giving their all. Auckland United looking to hang on to this 2-1 lead. And Kashmir trying to change their tempo. Get themselves back into the contest and somehow stay in the race for the grand final. Five minutes of regulation time and we're hearing there will be a minimum of four minutes of added time what that adds up to is plenty of time for Kashmir Barbara Ryan rolls a great ball for Matheson and there is Mac Waite with one of those moments had to be alert got off his line superbly he yeah, read that perfectly didn't he Mac White lovely ball from the middle of the park looking to get Matheson in you have to be alert as a keeper in those sort of areas. Okay, I'm now paying out the win bonus to Mac <laughs> Mac, you've earned your money. Hey, 
Haviland. And if Kashmir sit back, they'll just keep passing. They eventually force Haviland to go forward. Maniga, one of a number of players who have had attention from the physios today. There's another one in Haviland. This does do what uh, Harry has just maintains a fascinating contest for this uh, race to the grand final. Because uh, if Kashmir indeed are to fall off the pace, what Auckland United do with a win is very much keep themselves in the contest. Remember, it is top two into the grand final at the end of one round of regular season play. Auckland United. Their final two games, Birkenhead away, so a uh, cross-harbour derby, if you like, and then at home against Napier City Rovers. I mentioned earlier that Kashmir, they are away to the mix, and then at home against Christchurch, but that might be uh, largely irrelevant for Kashmir if the score stays at 2-1 to Auckland. But, uh, they're basically at a stage where they need to get an equaliser here to pick up you know, something out of this game, a point, and then you're relying on other results, or actually you're relying on, your, obviously, to get results yourself in those last couple of games, plus also relying on other teams and other results to go your way. So it really is in their, uh, some, to some extent, out of their own hands if they, if they do manage to pick up a point here. So of the top three, as uh, Samay Penda squares it across, but it's a good defensive cover by Richards. Of the three, Harry, with uh, Wellington Olympic, Auckland City and Auckland United, if they are the top three, which very much is likely to be the case at the end of this round, they don't have a match, those top three teams, in amongst them that group they, they don't play each other at all so they are all looking over their shoulders watching other results and, and of course having to make sure they pick up three points in the remaining matches themselves play challenge on Stephen was uh, a little uh, heavy the other team of course that uh, very much though comes into this equation is Burke and Head they go into this round on 10 points so a win for them tomorrow will also see them keep pace with Olympic Auckland City and Auckland United it's going to make for an exciting last couple of games Ito. So they did have numbers there, so Ito looked for the early delivery towards Redfern. Just a minute of regulation time to play. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, we've been told a minimum four minutes of time to be added on. Auckland United will try and use as much of that as they can in the taking of this corner. Mog and Haviland have still come forward, Harry, so they are still partially committed anyway to trying to find a third goal. They go short. Didn't work out for them. That'll be a free kick. Uh, no, not given. I thought uh, the referee put the whistle to the mouth there. And Mog tries one from a long way out, and the conversion is good. <laughs> and that just uh, sees a few more seconds uh, tick away. Birkin Head to uh, travel to Napier tomorrow, Harry. So if they are to continue their quest, and, uh, they must win away from home. 
really will set up a mouthwatering clash between Auckland United and Birkenhead next week. Here's Redfern. Plenty of space. Drives one. Knight parries it away. The third goal now at this late stage would certainly see the curtains drawn for Kashmir Technical. A little bit of keep ball is the order of the day here now. Mack Wake a long way out from his penalty area. Don't know that we'll see Ross Haviland heading up towards Kashmir penalty area now in the closing couple of minutes. Redfern hooks that one across. It has taken the deflection. And uh, they'll have another, another corner. Another opportunity to uh, just uh, count the seconds away. And each one that disappears is uh, another uh, moment very much in their favour, Auckland United. And Nam puts that one out for the throw. Cashman now with a, an opportunity to relieve some pressure with the throw. to the hands of Danny Knight. Reniga held his ground in high. Opportunity now for Machuca to turn, find space down this left wing side, but to just advancing too quickly, Stephen was offside. Yeah, they've got to throw plays forward now. Kashmir Tech just get everyone, I'd more or less get everyone out there and just bomb the ball forward, try and get it into the box from. You know, this got he's, he's look, Tyndall's looked very, uh, very tidy since he's come on, but they just in moments like this where they need to retain possession or recycle the ball, they just misplaced passes or been been a bit sloppy at times. Kashmir Tech into what could well be the final 60 seconds of this match and is it the final 60 seconds for Kashmir technical in terms of having hopes having thoughts of contending at least into the latter rounds of the season for a spot in the grand final it was uh, an uphill task for them against the odds but uh, while they were mathematically a chance they will have held out hope. All is out of play. Auckland City already having won today. They move to 16 points. Wellington Olympic are on 15 with a game to play tomorrow. This would move Auckland United to 14. Birkenhead would require a win tomorrow to move to 13 points. All of that, that scenario with two rounds to play. Mac Waite needs to keep that in. He can't do so. Okay, last chance saloon here for Kashmir Technical. Send everyone forward. Danny Knight may as well advance from his own penalty area. Have they got the energy to get there? Where are they? Now the cavalry arrives. Cleared away by United. Chance on the volley. Gee, that looked to be goal bound as well. United holding on. Wait gets there. And that might be the last piece of action. It is. And Auckland United, there's a little sigh of relief there as well as muted celebrations. It's been a tough ask for them today and they've made hard work of it against a dogged Kashmir technical who took the lead early from the penalty spot. Garvin Coughlin with his eighth goal of the season. He then left the game injured. That changed the, 
the uh, whole nature of the game and Zambrano equalized in the 38th minute and then his headed goal in the 78th minute proved the difference. Auckland United 2, Kashmir Technical 1. Well, they laboured through it at times, Harry, but uh, they've done what they needed to do, Auckland United. Got the three points and they've kept pace yeah. with Auckland City and with Wellington Olympic near the top of the table. Yeah, they've just done it. Well, they just did enough, didn't they? They didn't... Uh, there's large periods of the game where they controlled the tempo and dictated play, but they just weren't, you know, I guess decisive or didn't have that cutting edge up front in most of the first half anyway, but... They've, they've done enough. They've got their noses in front. And they're still in the well in the mix for that uh, that top two. As you said, that big game next week against uh, against Birkenhead. Yeah, they're all big now. They're all cup finals. They really are. Ross Haviland will be well pleased with his uh, team's end result, uh, even if there is a little work to do on the video this week in looking back at this game. It's... Uh, not to lose sight of just how energy sapping the conditions have been. It's a confirmation of the National Women's League results so far this weekend. Eastern Suburbs are running away with this competition. 9-1 winners over Central. Northern Rovers 4-0 over Capital. Still to come, Canterbury hosts Western Springs and Auckland United back here at Keith A Park. The women up against Southern. Both those games tomorrow afternoon on Sky Sport Next. And uh, that's what I mean. When I say running away with it, Western Springs have a game in hand, but they're 10 points behind their Northern League rivals. Northern Rovers sitting in third. Canterbury United uh, would be desperate to win, to uh, keep pace with the top three on the table. Central football has not been a great season yet to pick up a point. With a look now at the National Men's Championship and confirmation of results are today. So Christchurch United 2, Auckland City 3. Christchurch missing a penalty in that one. Auckland United, you've just seen 2-1 winners over Kashmir and Miramar over Melville. So Melville can't back up over a win last weekend on their 50th anniversary celebration weekend. Miramar Rangers get the job done 2-1 this afternoon. Still to come tomorrow, it's a, a Wellington derby. The Phoenix Reserves uh, playing Wellington Olympic. They'll look to pick up all three points if they can, Olympic, and continue what is a five-match winning run for them after losing in the first uh, round of the league. And Napier City Rovers against Birkenhead. And these results today mean it is imperative for Birkenhead to pick up a win tomorrow. And that's why. Auckland City may be temporarily on top, but they are. 16 points, Olympic with a game in hand on 15. Auckland United move to 14. Birkenhead, as I say, on 10. Kashmir now uh, pretty much out of the running, you would think, for a top two finish. While uh, Miramar Rangers uh, just edge towards Napier City Rovers in the race to avoid the wooden spoon. So Harry Nats are all to play for at the top of the table. All eyes will be on Birkenhead and Wellington Olympic tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of big games coming up in these last couple of weeks, Dewey. It's going to be really interesting, an exciting race to, to that top two finish. Really looking forward to how the, uh, the top two pan out. But there are four teams in amongst it. I feel yeah, Kashmir Tech had to win today, or at least a point to, to keep, keep themselves in there. But uh, it looks like it's going to be those top four teams fighting it out for two places. Well, the crew are back here at Keith A Park tomorrow for the National Women's League. It's live on Sky Sport next, 145 United against United, Auckland against Southern. On behalf of uh, Harry Narter and the entire team, it's been a pleasure bringing you continued coverage of the National Men's League. Auckland United stay in touch with the top of the table and their hopes of a grand final berth. 2-1 winners over Kashmir. Good afternoon from Keith A. Park.